Hello, and welcome to the TI Precision Lab discussing op-amp input and output limitations, part two. In this video, we'll discuss the details of several factors inside an amplifier which cause common mode or input voltage range limitations, as well as the advantages and disadvantages of different op-amp input topologies. Common mode voltage on op amps is normally defined as the average voltage on the amplifier input pins with respect to the supplies. Remember that the voltage on each input pin is approximately the same, a virtual short, under linear operating conditions. The common mode range is the range of usable input common mode voltages for a given amplifier. When an amplifier is used outside of the allowable common mode range, it will not respond linearly and will not meet datasheet specifications. As shown in the figure, some amplifiers have a common mode range which is slightly beyond the negative supply or positive supply. Other amplifiers have a common mode range which is a few volts away from either supply. The best case scenario is shown in the lower right hand corner. This amplifier has a common mode voltage range which is slightly beyond each power supply rail. This is called a rail to rail amplifier. In this video we will cover each of these possibilities and show how the operation of the amplifier's internal circuitry limits the common mode range. Strictly speaking, it is not necessary to understand the transistor implementation of op amps to use them in system designs. However, having some understanding of the internal topologies gives useful insight into system level performance. Let's consider an amplifier with a simple MOSFET input stage. If we look at the common mode voltage range specification, we see that the inputs can swing slightly below ground and a volt to several volts below the positive supply. An amplifier with this type of common mode range is sometimes called a single supply amplifier. Of course, in practice, any amplifier can be used in a single supply or dual supply configuration. Nevertheless, amplifiers with this type of common mode range are optimized to work with the negative supply grounded. For example, the single supply configuration shown on the left allows inputs from negative 0.2 volts to 4 volts. Any input below negative 0.2 or above 4 volts will not produce a linear output. Let's consider what happens inside the amplifier to cause this limitation. The diagram on the left shows a simplified schematic of the input stage in a typical CMOS op amp. In normal operation, the bias current in each input transistor is balanced at 100 microamps in this example. Changing the input common mode voltage results in a change of the drain to source voltage, or VDS, of the input transistors. This will shift the operating point on the ID versus VDS curve from left to right. In order to assure linear operation of the input stage, you need to operate on the flat part of the curve. In this example, if the operating point was shifted so that VDS is less than 100 millivolts, the device will operate in an undesired nonlinear condition. This is the common mode voltage limit of the op amp. Let's consider the input swing to the positive rail for the OPA336, a typical MOSFET device. This example schematic is a simplified version of the actual device schematic, but it is representative of the types of issues that limit common mode range. In this example, the maximum voltage on an input pin can be calculated by performing a Kirchhoff's voltage walk from either input pin to the positive supply. Starting at Vn- minus and walking to plus Vs, we see the gate to source voltage of Q4 plus the saturation voltage of the current source IS1. Typical numbers for these voltage drops are 0.9 volts for VGS and 0.1 volts for the current source Vsat for a total of 1 volt. Thus, the input common mode voltage can swing to within 1 volt of the positive supply, that is, Vn must be less than plus Vs minus 1 volt. Driving the input to a voltage greater than this will cause the transistor Q4 to cut off and the transistor in IS1 to saturate, giving a nonlinear response. Now let's consider the common mode limitations to the negative rail for the same amplifier. Again, the minimum voltage allowed on an input can be determined by doing a Kirchhoff's voltage walk from either input pin to the negative supply. Starting at Vn- and walking to minus Vs, we see the VGS of Q4 
the Vsat of Q4, and the VBE are base to emitter voltage of Q1. The polarities of these voltages give the relationship shown where the minimum VCM equals VBE plus Vsat minus VGS. Substituting the values for this circuit yields a common mode range of 200 millivolts below the negative rail. Once we reach the common mode limit, Q4 becomes saturated, causing nonlinearity. Let's move on to the next topology, an op-amp with either a typical bipolar or JFET input stage, such as the OPA827. This amplifier has common mode limitations to both supplies, that is, the input voltage must remain several volts away from each supply rail. The example circuit at the bottom of the slide shows the input common mode range with asymmetrical supplies of plus 12 volts and minus 5 volts. In this example, the amplifier would not respond linearly if the input signal was below minus 2 volts or above 9 volts. For this topology, we will only analyze the common mode swing to the negative rail using the same method as before. We will omit the details for brevity but the common mode limit is 3 volts from either rail. The important point here is that the bipolar input topologies will generally have common mode limitations to both power supply rails, while CMOS topologies can achieve common mode voltage range to either or both rails. This is because in CMOS devices, the VDS saturation voltage can be adjusted through transistor sizing, while in bipolar devices, the saturation voltage is fixed. Let's now consider an amplifier with a rail-to-rail -rail input that uses a complementary PFET and NFET input stage. On a rail-to-rail -rail amplifier, the input common mode range extends below the negative supply rail and above the positive supply rail. The circuit example at the left shows a single supply arrangement where the input common mode voltage can range from minus 0.3 volts to 5.3 volts for linear operation. The example on the right gives a split supply configuration where the input can range from minus 2.8 volts to plus 2.8 volts. Let's analyze how two separate P-channel and N-channel input differential pairs can be used to make a rail-to-rail -rail amplifier. The key idea is that the P-channel input pair can have a common mode range slightly below the negative supply, and the N-channel input pair can have a common mode range slightly above the positive supply. A P-channel device T8 is used in this case to control which of the two input pairs is actively biased. For the lower common mode range, the p-channel pair is biased. When the common mode voltage is about 2 volts from the positive rail, T8 diverts current from the p-channel input pair to the n-channel pair. For common mode voltages less than 2 volts from the positive rail, the n-channel pair is biased. Note that there is a region where both pairs share the bias current, called the transition zone. We will take a closer look at this behavior on the next slide. The two input transistor pairs have independent and uncorrelated input offset voltages. This usually means that the input offset will be different for the two input pairs. Thus, when we transition from one pair to the other, the offset voltage will abruptly change values. The figure on the right shows an example of the abrupt transition in input offset voltage. The green region shows the VOS when the p-channel input pair is active for the common mode voltages between minus 0.3 and 3.5 volts. The p-channel pair has an offset of about 100 microvolts. The red region shows the VOS when the n-channel input pair is active for common mode voltages between 4 and 5 volts. The n-channel pair has an offset of about minus 200 microvolts. When the common mode transitions past 3.5 volts, the offset transitions from 100 microvolts to minus 200 microvolts. This abrupt transition in offset can appear as distortion in the input signal, known as crossover distortion since it occurs during the crossover from one input pair to the other. Taking a closer look at the specifications table, you will notice that the common mode rejection is low if the entire common mode range is considered. In some amplifier specifications, you will see two separate specifications for common mode rejection ratio, CMRR, for the two different regions. In this case, the CMRR of each independent region can be very good, but the overall CMRR may be degraded if you include the crossover distortion. When looking at a rail-to-rail op-amp datasheet, the different regions over which the CMRR is specified can be helpful for determining the crossover region.
So what does crossover distortion look like? Let's consider an example when the amplifier is in unity gain and has the common mode transition near 4 volts. Because of the non-inverting configuration, the input signal is also equal to the common mode signal. When the input signal transitions above 4 volts, the offset transitions from 2.5 millivolts to minus 5 millivolts. Although this is a fairly large offset shift, it can be difficult to see on the output signal diagram. Zooming in at around 4 volts, however, allows us to see the output distortion introduced by the offset shift. In many applications, this crossover distortion is not as significant as it is in this example. As with any error source, consider your error budget and decide if this error can be tolerated. Another method for implementing a rail-to-rail -rail amplifier is to use an internal charge pump. The main advantage of the charge pump is that the amplifier will no longer have crossover distortion because only one differential input pair is present. The linear input voltage range of the device shown, the OPA365, extends 100 millivolts past each supply rail. Notice the high CMRR of 120 dB for the OPA365 compared to the OPA703, a complementary CMOS device which has a CMRR of 90 dB. Remember from our earlier discussion of a simple MOSFET input stage that the input voltage swing is limited by the VSAT of the current source plus the VGS of the P-channel FET. Boosting the supply voltage internally can overcome this limitation because the input voltage swing is then relative to the boosted internal supply rather than the externally applied power supply voltage. Here we show a simplified representation of the charge pump used in the OPA365. In this case, the charge pump boosts the supply voltage by 1.8 volts while not needing to supply much current. This is enough to overcome the VSAT plus VGS positive rail limitation on the P-channel input pair. One concern that often accompanies charge pump circuits is that they use a switched capacitor to achieve the voltage boost. The switching generates noise, but in the case of the OPA365, the amount of noise is minimized by the very low ripple design. Despite this, it is sometimes possible for the charge pump noise to affect the behavior of the op-amp. The charge pump in the OPA365 switches at 10 MHz, while the bandwidth of the amplifier is 50 MHz. So in lower gain configurations, the charge pump noise will be passed by the amplifier. Generally, the charge pump noise is very small relative to the broadband noise of the op-amp. Also note that the charge pump signal can feed through the external power supply. In this case, it can combine with other power supply noise sources and create harmonics of the charge pump signal. For this reason, it is best to use proper decoupling on the op-amp power supply pins. In some cases, using a ferrite between the amplifier and other sensitive circuits may also help. The final input topology we'll cover is zero drift. Zero drift amplifiers use a digital calibration method to greatly reduce VOS and VOS drift, the details of which will be discussed in a later video. The OPA333 is an example of a zero drift rail-to-rail -rail amplifier. Keep in mind that all zero drift amplifiers do not necessarily have rail-to-rail -rail inputs. Because the zero drift technology minimizes the VOS of the amplifier, the crossover distortion is heavily reduced as well. This is evident in the CMRR spec, which has a typical value of 130 dB across the entire linear common mode range. Zero drift amplifiers with rail-to-rail -rail inputs actually use the same complementary N-channel and P-channel input configuration as shown earlier in the video, so they do exhibit some degree of crossover distortion. However, the offset of the amplifier is corrected by digital calibration, so the magnitude of the offset transition and the crossover distortion is greatly diminished. In summary, this video discussed how different input stage topologies affect the input common mode voltage range of amplifiers. Secondary effects such as crossover distortion and charge pump noise were also covered. In the next video, we will discuss the characteristics of different output stages and the relationship between output swing and load current. Thank you for watching. Please try the quiz to check your understanding of this video's content.